hypothetical viewers, and welcome back to Shining Force uh, Final Conflict. It was called Sword of Hajia. Hmm. Uh, microphone sounds slightly tinny to me, but maybe that's just something to do with OBS. I don't know. Uh, so after testing it out, the Mist Demon stops giving good X once everyone gets up to level 17, which they all are now, but as promised. I'm actually going to, like, turn... see if that helps. Hmm. Well, let's just hope that uh, does not carry over to the recording, I guess. I'm not totally sure why the sound is being a little weird right now, but it sounds a little tinny in my headphones, but I don't know if it will in the recording. Uh, but as promised, I did get Knuckles and Cynthia up to promotion levels. Here is Knuckles. Um, I think this is probably his spell loadout. I, I don't know if his three utility spells level up or anything. He's got to heal level three. Maybe he'll eventually get four. Does not have a lot of MP. Um, and this is Cynthia, who got a single point of MP in all those levels, but her attack boosted up absurdly. She now has 43 attack. She is pretty competitive with the rest of the party. I assume that as they all get promoted, they'll outpace her. You know, because they're melee fighters, they should be better than the wizard, but... It's still very weird, because she also looks like she's 8 years old, basically, so she's like a tiny child who's somehow, like hitting monsters with her little staff and just fucking destroying them. She also got aura level 2, but she really doesn't have the MP to use it effectively. <laughs> like, on paper, she should be great. She has a great spell list, she has heal blast and aura, and she has great attack, but she has no MP. I'm really hoping that now that she's promoted, she'll get some MP. Um, so let's take a look at this map. This map's a little tricky because there's just piles of magic users, and apparently this becomes somewhat of a trend for the next few maps as well. So we have Blaze 2, Blaze 3, and they're kind of all in such a tight area that it's going to be very hard not to get attacked by lots of wizards at once. Uh, apparently once we reach this desert area, like a tentacle monster will appear here too, like the Kraken or whatever, which is a little weird. Um, but we'll deal with that when we get there. I never got that far in grinding because we were really only killing these enemies until they stop giving good X. I'm hoping the next level has multiple bull riders. I'm really hoping they'll give better X, and on the next map, I can get everyone up to 20 and promote them. Um, I'm, I'm hoping the bow rider gives better X, basically. We have not tested this yet. But uh, let's let's get a move on. Head on down this map. I don't know whether we just have to kill the bow rider or whether we have to kill everything. Uh, we will find that out. Don't do. I do like the um, the promoted battle of the map sprite here for uh, Cynthia's promoted class. The cape is very cool looking. <laughs> like a mysterious wizard. Uh, I have not seen her in battle yet. I promoted her basically just before um, this video. I once, uh, once I had her ready to promote her, wrapped up grinding. Uh, since we weren't really able to get our level 17 characters all that much higher, like, you know, we're, we're stuff is giving like 10 points at most of X, so it would just take forever. And I imagine that we'll get even lower if we push them up to 18. Um, so fingers crossed that next map will do it. If not, then, you know, I'll just stick it out and grind on the next map in spite of the fact that it will be quite painful to do it. But I did it for all the other Shining Force games. What is going on? I hope that these headphones aren't just like, something is not just wrong with them. I've, I've had them for a while. And they're not like, I'm not, I've probably said this in previous videos, I'm a very forgetful person, I repeat myself a lot, but um, these are not like some kind of pro gaming headset or anything. This is a, um, basically just like, what you know, normal wired headphones with a little like microphone attached that I got for free through an old job. <laughs> they're like super cheap and crappy. Uh, so they may be reaching the end of their useful life. Not sure. Maybe I should invest in an actual set. But like when I'm recording with the, with not on OBS, but with um, from the capture card, I just use an actual microphone, and I don't use a headset. So it's like, eh. <laughs> what do I really need it for? <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully we can get everyone up. Oh, let's uh, have Cynthia attack so we can see her sprite. Oh, it's kind of cool. Like a, you know, you have the the cape looks more like a shawl here. It looks like she has some kind of headband. She seems to have gotten taller. <laughs> I guess the priest sprite is like an adult, and her healer sprite looked much more like a child. But um, <laughs> she looks weirdly tall now. She's another.
another character, like a uh, like Bowie in Shining Force 2, who promotion somehow caused puberty to occur, <laughs> and they got like taller. Uh, we'll see Knuckles battle sprites soon enough. Gotta carefully approach down here. Uh, I while grinding, I have had characters die quite a lot to this, just because it's very hard to avoid getting hit by like multiple blazes in a row basically because you have a lot of enemies down here that can use it and i did give sylvia the power sphere it's very very powerful <laughs> doing a lot of damage her attack is on par with cynthia because this game doesn't make sense somehow okay yeah so we have both of them in play so it's quite awkward Trying not to stack everyone, but it's probably going to be inevitable. I hope we'll get to a town with a shop soon, because, like, we could really use some upgraded weapons. The, the characters who have upgraded weapons we found in chests are so much better than everyone else at this point, because their attack is so much higher. Uh, so it would be really helpful if we could get some better weapons for everyone. Room to charm. Yeah, this is a... This is one of this is gonna be one of our tougher fights so far, just because of the sheer number of magic users. And like our characters don't have super high HP, so the magic users are actually quite threatening. It's it's weird. As I was leveling, I definitely was finding that characters were not getting a lot of well, definitely for Knuckles and Cynthia who got the most levels, they weren't getting a lot of HP and MP. You can see the lack of MP very easily. They would get like two or three stats and other things, and Cynthia got a lot of attack. Um, but they were not gaining that much in terms of HP and MP, so this may just be a game where, like, we're kind of running on relatively low MP the whole time, I guess? Which is a bummer, <laughs> because it really hurts our magic users, but, you know, we've got to roll with it. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Mist Demon will be able to hit us, but I want to get rid of the Witch, which has Blaze 3, which is more dangerous. At least Minto can get good X right now, because since she's a lower level character due to being a promoted unit, um, she can actually get some decent X buffs these enemies. Blaze 2 is not as dangerous as Blaze 3, so this is okay. We can get Cynthia in with Aura or something. But this is the trick, like the other witch is not far. <laughs> so more of Blaze 3 is also not far. Uh, actually, Blaze 1 should be enough. Let's Let's be conservative here. There we go. See, the Mist Demon is only giving 10 as well, so it's... Yeah, we could grind out more levels, but it would take forever. <laughs> because basically, characters could get like 20x a, a per enemy. Per battle, because you only have like two Mist Demons. So it just would not be a efficient use of time. <laughs> uh, I'm holding out hope that the Bow Rider in the next map will be a bit more substantial in terms of X. Or at the very least, there's more of them. Because even if we're only getting 10 a pop, if there's like 7 of them, it's like, okay, one character, that's that's like close to, and, and maybe if you have a couple other enemies that give 10, it could be like one level, you could get a character one level per battle, which is at least doable. You know, whereas in a case where it's like, you have to redo the battle 5 times to get one level, that's just like, no. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh... This just exposes us to get hit again, but whatever, I don't know. Maybe we'll be able to move before that, hopefully. It's just such a good setup. <laughs> she can't cast Aura very many times, though. She can cast it twice, because her MP is that bad. I'm fingers crossed that her leveling will change now that she's promoted. <laughs> we basically have to hold out hope that that's true, because otherwise... She's just always going to be the character who casts Aura twice and nothing else. Which will just suck so much. <laughs> like, why would you design the character like this? She's Her main purpose is healing. I haven't tried out Morton yet. He, I did check his stats, though. He also does not have a lot of MP. So I'm wondering if this is just how this game is. Like, your magic users are just constantly MP-starved, so they're a bit worthless. Which is such a weird decision because I, I mean I guess at least Cynthia can attack okay so maybe that'll be a trend like that's not true for Howl but maybe for the healers at least I really don't know uh, it is a little baffling 
But yeah, I, I don't know if magic users just aren't very good in this game or what, but... <laughs> the low MP seems to be a problem for pretty much all of them. Even Howl can, can only use Blaze 3 like twice. You know, he just can't do very much. And the thing is, magic isn't even that strong. If magic was much stronger in this game compared to other Shining Force games, then I would be like, oh, that makes sense. But it's not. It's the same as all the others. You know, it's it's actually a little weaker than just melee fighting. So it's weird that on top of it not being as good as melee anyway, it also is disadvantaged in scarcity. That's just an odd, an odd game design decision, you know? Because normally, like, if some ability is really good, you understand if the designers make it so you can't use it all the time. So it's like, it's really good, but you have to pick and choose the right moment to use it. But when it's like, an ability is kind of mediocre, and you also can't use it often, it's like, <laughs> what was the purpose of this? Uh, let's just have her use heal on herself for now. She is already almost out of spells, so it can't be helped. She has very little MP. Maybe if we can find an item, like an MP boost item, the same way we had the Cheerful Bread for HP, we could give that to her and that would be a bit better. Because her spell list is great. Ah, <sighs> she just can't make use of it. Very frustrating. But, you know, I'll have to work with what we have. None of the, uh, the problem is that Knuckles and Morton are not really better. <laughs> so we just kind of have to make the best of it. We don't really have an optimal healer here. Okay. So basically, we're we're now up to the point that I got to while grinding. This is all the enemies I would defeat before retreating because, you know, that that's a good pile of them. <laughs> and um, we're not going to defeat the bow rider because what if that ends the level? So basically, that's all of the decent exp enemies. But now we will venture further and try to actually end the level. If we can get the enemies to come over here. They seem to actually be retreating, which <laughs> is so great. Now we can spend a long time walking. The enemies retreating, that's the thing. Them retreating just means that we have to walk longer, which <laughs> is not an interesting activity to do in a game. Um, well, there's not a ton to say about this battle. Oh, yay, Cynthia leveled up. What we get? Oh, well, she got one MP, I guess. That's something. I The last couple levels, she didn't even get that. So, hey. That's something. <laughs> She's level 2 promoted. I got her all the way up to 20. She has 17 MP. <laughs> At four more levels where we're lucky enough to get one MP, and she can use Aura a whole three times for battle. Sigh. <laughs> it's it's sigh-inducing. She can use five... Heal level ones. <laughs> That's sad. That's sad. But um, yeah, other than this battle where not a lot is going on, I'm kind of wrapping up my playthrough of uh, Hyrule Calamity Warriors or whatever. Age of Calamity, rather. It's like the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Which, I did enjoy it. It's fun. I gotta say, the big complaint I... Oh, Whoa, a cutscene in the middle of the battle. You're doing very well, since that's the case. Tentacles come out. Oh, it's flooding. I get it. Okay. That's why that... Because I was wondering. I was like, why would tentacles appearing even matter? We're up here. But it floods so they can affect us. Okay. That makes more sense. That's kind of neat, I have to say. That makes the battle kind of a little more exciting. You know, you kind of get to this point and it's like, whoa, the whole battlefield has changed. It's... I guess this is supposed to be like a marsh now, basically. And uh, I think these are just the same as the Kraken we fought before, probably. Except that the head is not here. So we'll have to contend with them attacking us as we make our way across, too. I, I actually like that. You know, I kind of like that. It's It, like, adds a little bit of a challenge to it, you know, as we're... Because, as, like I was saying, it's walking is not an exciting thing to do in a video game. So this is like, ah, you have to reach the boss while fending off the attacks from these new enemies that appeared. That definitely adds a little more interest to the to the map. It gives it like a purpose to why we have to walk here. Oh, and the battle background changed to like this swampy background. It looks great, I gotta say. I, I know I say this all the time, but the battle background this battle background looks quite excellent. I think they did a great job on the um the spriting on like the water with the, the little, you know, marsh grass sticking out of it. It actually looks really evocative of the real life salt marsh. <laughs> Salt Marsh is my favorite terrain too. <laughs> In real life, no joke. That's it's my favorite. 
They have good movement. Ooh, and they can attack at range. This is definitely going to be tough. These are... I wonder if these things give good acts. That could have grinding potential, if so. Jeez, actually they seem really hard to kill, though. <laughs> Look how much HP it has. The 42 HP? I think I'll go on the next battle anyway, because getting all the way to this point... For grinding, you have to get all the way to the point where the enemy is, and then egress and start again, and... A, it actually seems fairly difficult to deal with these things, and B, they're so far into the battle that it would be kind of annoying to get all the way here and keep grinding. Jeez, they're fast, too. Like, I, I think I need Julia to retreat and heal. Because otherwise she'll die of poison. Like, she got attacked by three of them, and she wasn't even particularly close to them. So this is, uh, these are, these are quite a tough addition to the battle. And they can counterattack, dang! And this is difficult terrain for our cavalry, which is annoying. It kind of makes the cavalry oddly, like, worse as characters. Let's try a bolt. Maybe it'll be more effective because they're in the water. That would be Pokemon logic. <laughs> <laughs> Electric is good against water. Well, it did decent damage, anyway. Uh, I really want to take out this one because it seems to be the most dangerous, so I'm focusing on it a bit. Ah, oh, excellent. Good job, kiddo. Yeah, the axe that gives is not even that strong, and considering what a pain it is to get to this point and fight them, I'd rather wait until the next map. Okay. This is still, this is still a cool little diversion in the middle of the battle, though. Definitely makes it more interesting. Uh, she's not in range to do anything right now. But, uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I think my big complaint with Age of Calamity is that I haven't played a lot of Warriors games. I just, I guess I just haven't really come across them that much up to this point. But I, prior to this one, when the Switch came out, on when I bought my Switch, I bought Breath of the Wild and I bought Fire Emblem Warriors. And that was the first Warriors genre game that I played. And I liked it a lot. Uh, and now I've played Calamity Warriors, or Age of Calamity. I keep calling it Calamity Warriors, which is not the title. Um, maybe I'll just detox her real quick. The poison is kind of annoying. Um, and I think the thing that... Th they're very different mechanically, so I actually... That was kind of neat, too. I was like, wow, I, I haven't played any Warriors games before, but just from playing these two, I'm like... You can see how this is a genre where there's actually a, a big design space, where you could make a lot of different kinds of games within this sort of broad Warriors concept. Uh, which is cool, I like that. Um, but the big thing is that in Age of Calamity... The AI seems to not really do anything when you're not controlling them. So even if you have like five characters on a map and you like can order them to go places, but once they get there, they don't actually fight the enemies while you're not controlling them. And they don't seem to lose HP very much either. So it seems like the only things that are happening is whatever you are doing, which could work as a design, but the problem is that that's not how the game is designed. Like. I'm trying to beat this level now, and, and this has come up in a couple of other levels, but you can kind of overcome it by just being very overleveled, where it's like, defeat these three enemies within a time limit, and there's like three characters, but the AI can't do anything on its own, so you, the player, have to defeat an enemy, then swap to the next character, defeat an enemy, swap to the next character, defeat an enemy, but the amount of time you're given kind of seems like they assume that that's not what you're doing. And I don't know if they just assumed you would have a co-player, because you can play it in two-player mode, and I'm like, look, not all of us have a friend who wants to play Age of Calamity. <laughs> like, not everyone wants to play this game. But it's it's just a weird design decision to me, because I'm like, in Fire Emblem Warriors, you are generally going to be faster at doing stuff than the AI, because the AI won't use um, special attacks on its own, presumably because it would be annoying for the player to switch to a character and be like, hey, why is the special meter empty? You know, because it... The AI wouldn't know how to use it strategically. Um, and like you're the, like the player, you can just do combos faster than the AI seems to do them. The AI seems a little slower, but they'll do stuff. They can like take over an outpost, you know, a fortress. It's they're called fortresses in Fire Emblem Wars. They can like take over a fortress or like defeat, you know, a strong enemy or whatever while you were doing other stuff. And that doesn't seem to, hit, at the very least, having played through like the entire game at this point, I have like one battle left on the map. I'm thinking it might unlock some other stuff, I'm hoping, but. It's, it's what's there right now. And I just have never seen the AI actually accomplish anything. Other than going to a location and waiting there. <laughs> Which 
is like, why would you, why even give me multiple characters to control that? <laughs> like, what is the point? But, um, but yeah, I don't like that about that. Because in Fire Emblem Warriors, you're kind of like, it makes it feel more tactical, where it's like, okay, I'm going to order the AI to go handle this while I handle that, and then I'll wrap around and do that. You know, it's like you're commanding your little units that are fighting for you. Whereas in Calamity Warriors, it's like, it, it's just like you're the player and you swap between which part of the map you want to play on. <laughs> Except the game seems to think that you should, the AI should be doing things on its own because it sort of seems like it's the time budget it expects that to happen. Because this level, I'm like, I feel like I basically only need like, maybe 30 more seconds on the timer to beat it. I'm already pretty overleveled for it. But if I overlevel even more, because once you're really overleveled, you can just kill stuff faster, right? You save time. But it feels like if the AI could at least not even kill an enemy while I'm not controlling it, but just like do a little damage and deplete the health bar slightly, it would be doable. But they don't. Or like you can't leave an AI behind to guard your base while you fight stuff. The AI will sit there, but it won't actually guard it. So anytime an enemy gets in, you have to swap back and kill it, which is kind of annoying. It's like, why can't the AI do things for me? Why can I order it, make, give it orders if it doesn't achieve anything? So that's my, that's I think my main complaint with it. That that's just, I mean, I'm sure it's designed that way on purpose, right? That it's just like that's how the game is designed. But it's it's a design feature that just feels a little weird. Given that you can order the AI to go places, it's like, why is that possible when <laughs> it doesn't... Why make that a thing? Oh, that bow rider's strong. Oh. But yeah, that's I, that's my kind of... <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting fact. Where it's Fire Emblem Warriors, the, the AI does actually accomplish things while, when you order to go somewhere. It'll, like, kill stuff. Um, so it makes you feel more like the captain of your little squad, you know, which... <laughs> And like, in a way I'm not surprised because that's very Fire Emblem, right? Like Fire Emblem is a tactics game where you're commanding an army and the warrior's version of that does evoke that feeling by having your warriors do stuff when you command them to other places. Um, but it just felt odd for Calamity Warriors to let you have multiple units under your control but they don't do stuff unless you're controlling them. If it only had maps where it was single player, it would not feel janky at all because Zelda is a single player game, so. But uh... But the art direction and the music and everything like that is, you know, production value is high, as expected. The story, I'm sort of assuming, maybe it's more like I'm hoping, that if I beat this last currently available battle and do, like, the last um, quest so that I've, like, I, I have, like, two more quests. One of them is going to take forever because I need to unlock all the rest of the Koroks, get all the Korok seeds, which is, like... That's gonna take a while, because they're a little... <laughs> it's kind of difficult to find them when you're on a battlefield, especially if it's a timed mission, because you're like wandering around searching every little nook and cranny, and meanwhile the timer is running out. Um, but I'm pretty close to... I have like two quests left, and this one battle, and I'm kind of hoping that... Oh God, killing the Shaman is really annoying because my units... This is difficult terrain for them, so it's really hard to actually bring them to bear so they can attack the shaman, and the shaman can heal, so it just... And the shaman also has relatively high defense, so this is just like an exercise in futility. <sighs> but, um, but yeah, I'm hoping it will unlock, like, more battles, or like, maybe one big final battle that will finally explain who the fuck Astor is, because this is my big complaint with the game. Spoilers if you haven't played it, but... You were opposed the whole game by an enemy named Astor. Oh good. I, I gotta make sure that the person who defeats the bow rider has an empty inventory slot, because he has an item as well. Uh, if you look at him here, he has the running ring, and the running ring is very good, so we definitely want it. Fortunately, most of our units do not actually have- oh well, Sylvia has- we have a couple. Yeah, we have a couple people, because we use some healing herbs, I guess, so we have some people who have free slot and some who do not. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. But, um, you keep fighting this guy, Astor, who's, like, plotting against you the whole game. And he is not a character from Breath of the Wild. Unless I, like, is he in, like, a secret log somewhere that I just missed? I don't know. I don't remember him. <laughs> uh, he does not ring a bell. 
Or if he's from some other Zelda game, maybe I'm just missing something in the lore, but... I have no idea who the fuck this guy is, and I kept assuming that at some point the game would explain who he is, but that never happened. So I've like gotten through this entire game, and I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? So I'm really hoping if I beat this last battle, it'll unlock a mission that will finally explain what this guy's deal is and why he's here, but... If that never happens, that will also be a complaint for me that, like, the story is never explained, but I'm hoping it will be eventually. Okay, so, man, we only lost one unit in that. That's not bad. That was a tough battle. This, I will say, I liked the design of this map. It was interesting. There was something to do the entire map. There was not dead space because of the tentacles appearing. It actually made this an interesting challenge to get past this area to the boss. Um, there was never a space where it was like, we're just walking and doing nothing. And, and it was challenging. So I actually thought this was a fun map design and a, and a fun little mid-battle event. So kudos for that. Like the battle backgrounds as well. Remember this. Although you defeated us, you won't defeat Master Eku in his fortress. Ugh. <laughs> so we're gonna go fight him next, I guess. Men, having heard those words, it seems Eku's fortress may be a considerable thing to deal with today. Before we go on to fight, we should go and drop by the village of Roft. I can't tell if my robot voice is getting worse or better. Oh, finally there's a shop. Okay, uh, let's quickly res Sunet. Okie dokie. Okay, I forgot Kiddo died too. Yeah, that's right, we lost two people. But uh, that's not bad though. Considering that it was a fairly tough map. And, um, wow, I've, actually, we lost a lot of people. I forgot about several of them. Okay, it, we did okay. <laughs> we did adequate. <laughs> uh, let's take a peek at everyone's stats. We can also sneak a peek at Morton, our new guy, a level 4 Master Monk. Um, he also has good attack, you know. He's, he's like a hybrid healing and fighter. His stats, he's slow. His agility is low. And his MP is not much better than the characters we already had. He has heal, quick, blast, and muddle. Quick boost agility, so that's kind of a nice utility spell, um, but he doesn't really have a lot of MP, so it's sort of hard for him to make use of that. <laughs> this is an unfortunate thing. This is the problem we have with a lot of the characters, where he has okay MP, but like Blaze costs 10, so he, 3 costs 10. He can use it twice, that's it. Uh, Paige is a little behind, because he doesn't keep up with the others very well. <laughs> ben has already reached level 18, so that's not bad. I mean, it's nice to have him in a, in a good position. Yes, we got the running ring, good. Just check in. And, uh... Cynthia picked up, yeah, Protect Staff, which she can probably use, because she's promoted. Um, so we have some characters that are at least getting close to level 18, so... Let's see the cutscene for this next battle. I'll check out the camp later when I actually, like, yeah, I'm in a position to, you know, get people new stuff. Let's check out the cutscene for now. I don't remember what voice I gave this guy, but I'm just going to give him the voice I used for our dragon recruit, because it's, I feel like, he actually looks like Ganondorf to me, honestly, his face, like a blue Ganondorf. There was a blue Ganondorf in one of the games, he changed it to like a blue pig man in one of the earliest ones, but uh, he looks all Ganondorf-y. Anyway, it seems that my scouting party met an untimely end. My order to avoid the battle and lure the enemy out must have been ignored. Since they defeated Magus, it's clear they are tough. So you can tell that he's like the noble demon character because he's the one enemy who's not underestimating us. He's like, basically he's the character who's not a total dick, <laughs> but he's still our opponent, unfortunately. Um, and he's, isn't he, didn't they say he was the son of Elliot, the dragon man from Shining Force 1, who was the same type of character where he's like a noble knight, but like he doesn't want to disobey his king who has turned evil. So he's in the same mold, except he's fighting for fucking Michelle, so who the fuck knows. They really are the shining force, no kidding. That's right, Aiku, I suggest that you pay extra attention and be well prepared before you face them. I don't know who that is. Oh, it's Lynx, of course. Lynx! Indeed, how are your battle preparations progressing? I feel like I give him a different voice every time. <laughs> Whatever. I'm rubbish at voices anyway, it doesn't matter. What are you doing here? Matt just died before your very eyes and you didn't try to help him. If I was in the same situation, you wouldn't help me either. I will not allow this to happen. Aiku seems to be picking up on the fact that Lynx is a bit of a dick. 
If those guys enter my fortress, they won't ever leave it. Aiku, are you saying that I allowed Magus to die? I suppose no matter what I say, it won't change your prejudice. I mean, <laughs> he's right, though. He, this guy 100% just let him die and give a fuck. <laughs> I shouldn't have wasted my time worrying about you, Aiku. Anyway, good luck. You must win. <laughs> this is a very functional group of people, we can see. Is he gone? You can teleport, so you can be back at any moment, really. It looks like they've arrived. We have indeed. We are here to fell this fortress. Isn't that right, men? Some of your forces are women. <laughs> Quite a few, actually. <laughs> and some of them are small children. <laughs> Everyone, they are here. Now take them down. I can already see our victory. Whoa. I guess that's their cries of enthusiasm. Whoa. I don't know if that's <laughs> really it. I feel like that's more a distress noise, but let's take a look. This fighting is nice. I like how the fortress looks. Um, we're going to have quite a few chests in this battle. I really wish, like in the mainline, you know, the non-handheld ones, we could look at the entire map in the miniature, but that option is not available for the game here, I guess. What the hell is this thing? The Hydra. So we have more than one new enemy here. We also have the Master Mage with Freeze 2 and the Bow Rider, obviously. And they have the Robin Arrow, which is range three, so that's gonna be that's gonna be tough. They deal a lot of damage too. I thought we had more than one chest here, but maybe it's just the one. Uh, maybe the others are all droppable items, because I know there's multiple items you can get here. Do -do -do. I'm just gonna take a quick peek through all the items. I know this video is running a little long, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, will anyone ever even watch it? Oh, so we have a black ring here, I guess we can get. Music is pretty good. I like this little background tune. It's kind of fun. No way. I thought there were more items to get here, but maybe there are not. Yeah, we have that one chest, and I guess that is that. So, it's a fairly complex map structure. I think, I guess we're going to want to sort of handle these guys in the side towers just so they don't attack us as we're walking by. And then we'll just kind of have to come up here and deal with this middle part. And then, probably just go up to the left to keep the party together. There's lots of narrow corridors, so this will definitely be tricky. going to be lots of bottlenecks and lots of enemies that can take advantage of that. Um, I think this map is going to be a better bet for grinding because of the multiple different new enemies we have, which will hopefully give a bit more experience. So hopefully uh, after this this uh, episode, I will finish getting everyone up to 20 and promote them. And hopefully in the next video, we can see all our new promoted characters, hopefully, and then try to conquer this, uh, this fortress and get whatever that item is. I think it might be the Valkyrie, which will be nice. So thank you for watching, hypothetical viewers. Um, we have at last reached Aiku's fortress, and now we must confront Aiku. Although he's not on this map, so I'm assuming that we'll have to go like deeper inside the fortress through this door. So this is like the beginning of us storming the fortress. This will be like a multi-battle <laughs> event, I guess. So look forward to us uh, entering Aiku's fortress in the next episode of Shining Force Final Conflict.